Hello, Namaste, and welcome to the Festival of Bharat. My name is Sharan Sethi, and I'm your host for this program. India witnessed peak violence in the 1980s when the Khalistani movement took shape and was most active. It even led to the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, after which there were the 1984 riots. So Hindus and Sikhs in Punjab have had a very bitter history in the recent past, if you were to look at it in that way. But today we are joined by somebody who genuinely believes that there is a Sanatani connection between Hindus and Sikhs, and that needs to be restored. Why are Khalistani groups so active in Canada and the UK? Why are fake referendums held very often? Why is Pakistan not a plan of the Khalistani project? Why don't they demand certain parts of Pakistan that was originally supposed to be there? Why have the farmers protest suddenly from what it was a political protest become a religious one with a lot of Khalistani elements uh, being present there take a particular shape? These are the questions I'm going to be asking my guest Puneet Sahani ji today. Puneet ji, namaste and satsri akal. Welcome to the festival of Bharat. Jai Ma Bharati. How are you and how's everything in America right now? How's the pandemic? I'm doing well. Things are getting back to normal. It's, you know, it's a sunny day. So everything is fine. Uh -huh. Thank you. I'm really glad to know that. Let me begin by asking you, uh, I watched a few of your uh, earlier inter interviews that you've given to different uh, channels. And what I found very interesting is the use of this particular term called Mexics, you know. So are you referring to the Abraham Abrahamization of Sikhs here when you uh, speak of that term? So Saran, actually, so if you look at Sikh history to today, from Guru Nanak's time to today, that's roughly about 500 years, right? And the first 200 years actually like coincide with 200 years of Mughal rule, right? And then Mughal rule falls and, you know, like the gurus also leave. And then there is another 200 day period. So basically Sikhism as it existed in the first 400 years and how it has been distorted in the last 100 years is completely different. It's like, for example, my great grandparents would come. They would not be able to relate to what is happening. So actually there is a magisterial book by written by one person called Harjot Obroy. Uh, it's called Construction of Religious Boundaries. It was written in 1994 and basically they became crazy, you know, because he basically destroyed this entire Khalistani narrative. So when even you talk about Hindu Sikh community, they, are, they were just like an overflowing, you know, like for example, you are a shark and you are a Vaishnav, you are as much a Hindu. So this was a moment in Punjab and there was no distinction between Hindus and Sikhs. There was not even two communities, but this was created. And, you know, when they say about fundamentalism, you have to understand something very curious that happened. So when they talked about fundamentalism, it was not going back to the fundamentals. It was actually, or going back to the tradition. It was distorting the tradition or basically killing the tradition for political ends. So this is what happened. And, you know, in that sense, because, you know, there was an English uh, government servant. His name was Arthur McAuliffe. So he was the first person who wrote like an extended history of the Sikhs. And, you know, because it was the first one in English, everybody referred to that source. And that basically what people are following now, it's not what our gurus wrote or what the books were written in Guru's time or Maharaja and Jee Singh's time. What are we telling is history basically created in McAuliffe. So that people who basically follow an SGPC, they are called Macaulay Sikhs or Mech Sikhs. And you know, like he, he has written something so outrageous. So he basically writes six volumes and I just share an extract and I've, mm -hmm. I'll put it also on my Twitter. You know, you can share it. Some things you can't believe, but what he basically says, for example, he writes in volume five that the Guru Gobind Singh has said, how he knows, nobody knows that when the English would come, oh, you Khalsa, you become one with the British. You become basically their mercenaries. You know, they will go east, west, you go along with them. You know, they will have like a very uh, glorious rule. And if you are very uh, loyal to them, you know, you will get everything. You will get money, fame, peace, and women. So this is your duty as the Sikhs to basically becomes, you know, like uh, lapdogs of the British. This is what he has written. 
and you know this was promoted by the sgpc and you know their uh, people like that so the, the entire history has been completely distorted and nobody can speak against it you know because they have control like the religious institutions and whatever you say you know like uh, i think you are from karnatak you, you know it just becomes a religious thing it's not a question yeah. about what is ethical what is logical but they just play this religious game so mm. that that is a case yeah it's very interesting because um the fundamentalists that are praising um, the taliban today adopt very similar lines and they come from that school of thought where they are completely abrahamized because when you look at what has happened to sikhs and hindus in uh, afghanistan i think every kid who has read history books in the last 10 20 years knows that they have been brutally persecuted you know to an extent where there are only a few left if there are any a few left after the takeover of uh, you know the taliban in kabul um so where you i mean where where is this coming from i want to ask you since you observe these groups very closely and you study them why does any group even though they are khalistanis have to praise um, you know somebody like the taliban so you know uh, it, it, this can be answered on many things so for example you know like people work uh, in their self interest right and they are and they are rational they can be perverse So to give you an example for example you have the pakistan army so it will be in the benefit of pakistani citizens that they basically normalize relationship with india and stop this hatred of hindus and you know of indians in their schools right but if they do it their entire foundation will fall down they will like why did we got so many million people slaughtered if we can live in peace and this is what is in benefit of us why did it? so it is in the rational it is perverse but it is in the rational interest of the pakistani army to you know fan hatred to create this feeling of insecurity in the exact same manner we have institutions like the sgpc now sgpc has been created it's you know it's actually fascinating i rec- recommend another book to you it's called six secret separatism by rajiv kapoor which goes into the history of sgpc and something like that it's it's an excellent book you know it's one of the uh, a criminal oversights of our history right uh, you know he basically the ex- he doesn't say it but what i analyze it when this uh, muslim league and you put the akali dal you put word to word what they are saying you just replace sikh from muslim you replaced muslim league from akali dal and they had the exact same slogans they had the exact same strategies they were interacting with gandhi ji in the exact same manner there is absolutely no difference so for example to give you an idea like if you go to uh, any gurdwara they use the word qom qom se qom qom now qom is a persian arabic word it means a nation you see the gurus especially guru gobind singh he was a master of persian he has never once used the word qom he has always and he has spoken about it at length and created different uh, you know works he always uses the word panth no panth is an indic concept you understand what it is mm-hmm. same with maharaja ranjit singh he you see all the works written in that way they mention the word panth the first kind of history of you know between the gurus and maharaja ranjit singh there is a book written by ratan singh bangu is called prachin panth prakash he could have written prachin kom prakash why is he writing panth prakash so they always say panth but muslim league was what ki hum we juda gana komiyat so we are a separate nation then they say we are not separate nation but we are an equal nation what does that mean that we are 25% but we claim 50% of the resources the same was akali dal akali dal said nation which has never been used by the gurus and their demand was like six are 15% give us 30% quota so muslims were asking double the quota six were asking the same thing muslim league demand was we are the only sole representative of the muslim mm-hmm. akali dal same actually they did this in 1980s they said we are the sole representatives of the sikh which is utter nonsense if you look at uh, uh, the elections in punjab congress used to have more sikh mlas than akali mlas actually right. this was actually the whole problem you know so we don't vote as a tribe and this is what they want to create so what these people who are supporting taliban you know they just want to create this feeling of insecurity so pakistan has no ethics and morals it will support china which is doing a genocide of uigurs because what it is hatred is 
focus on India. You know, that's where they have to create the insecurity. Same with this Akali Dal, this uh, Khalistanis, this Taksalis, all these people. They don't feel any shame in supporting the Taliban because their only enemy is India and the Sanatan culture and howsoever they may attack it. How, how many people, um, when I say people, I mean the common man, actually subscribe to these uh, falsified notions that these Khalistanis actually propagate? So, uh, uh, you have to break it in two parts. First is inside India and outside India. You know, actually, you know, like, you now people are watching this, they're like, okay, why, why do Sikhs are 2%? Why do we have to understand this? You know, there are two people, doesn't matter, but they would be wrong. So the thing is, all the big questions that are, you know, challenging our country or our culture, actually, you see the division between caste, this uh, religious uh, fanaticism, right? They can all be tra traced back to actually Punjab. You know, there were actually actions that pre-partition British did that created this whole thing. And I will, give, I'm sorry to digress, but I'll take just two things. So Maharaja Ranjit Singh empire falls in, 1857 or 1849, right? And you have the mutiny. So 1860 to 1880, and you read this period by there is a great, he died now, his name was N. Gerald Barrier. So from there, they come this question of quota things. So there was, you know, like uh, the British said, you know, like the Hindus were overrepresented in services and the Muslims would complain. And the British said, you know, it's an open system. You take English education, you study, and you can compete at, in a fair market system. That was the original idea. But this yeah. Layal, yeah, who's, on whose name Layalpul also was created, he said, no, 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 this will become too much. Let's create a quota system. And what they found out, this exacerbated the divisions. This didn't make it rest. And this exacerbated street politics. Because once the Muslim League find out, actually the British gave in. Mm. They compromised on principle they became much more virulent. So this quota politics, again, you have to go to Punjab and you can read N. Gerard Berrier. Then in religious differences, I already said uh, Harjot O'Brien's book, the Construction of Religious Boundaries, how they basically created a separate Sikh identity. And you know what is so fascinating, now I talked about it, there was fortnightly, there was CID report, what uh, the British would communicate with each other confidentially. And you see, like, for example, McAuliffe that I mentioned, and there was another senior person, Petri. Hmm. They speak, created Sikhs into a separate nation. Now they don't believe they are into a Sanatan fold. And while they are seeing it, at the same time, they say they are third-rate people. They are calling the gurus of the Sikhs as mercenary or as decoits. But outwardly, they are saying the very good thing to do with Sanat. So they are playing this religious division. That is, again, you see. And the third is this Kapoor's book in 1920s onward, which became this Akali, this separate nationhood and the world, this your religion is under insecurity or something like that. So all this happened in Punjab. Now I come back to your question. So Sikhs who are outside of Punjab, they hmm. are completely one with Sanatan. So to give an example, even the, you mentioned Afghanistan. If hmm. you go to Afghanistan, they don't call their temples Gurdwaras. Hmm. They call their temple Dharamsal. Dharamsal hmm. is in Sanatan, right? There is no distinction between Hindu and Sikhs. The same in Sindh. The same in if you go UP, they are completely one. Sikhs are spread all over India. But because in uh, Punjab, you have created a perverse institution like SGPC, which is radicalizing, which is happening. So in Punjab, they have a limited appeal, but it is growing. Now you go to diaspora outside of India. This has again happened. And you know, this, uh, it's also a cultural problem with like Jajjad Sikhs and they have basically controlled Gurdwaras. So in uh, Canada and in uh, UK, again, they are a minority, but they are like maybe 2% of the population, but they've controlled 90% of the Gurdwaras, which gives them, you know, religious muscle, which gives them money. So it, in terms of number, it's small, but I would not say the problem is small. The problem is actually larger. Very interesting. You know, this is suddenly starting to make so much sense because I'll give you a recent analogy. Uh, you must have read about the entire hijab controversy that is happening uh, here in my home state of Karnataka. And one of the biggest narratives that is being pushed by the left media is that if, you know, these uh, Muslim girls are not allowed to wear a burqa, then how can uh, Sardarji come in with a pagdi, right? So these, uh, so I think historically too, from what you're saying, 
uh, every argument that is laid out for an exclusivist Muslim law or a provision being created is also conveniently, um, should I say, shrouded towards the Sikh community so that they can uh, adopt the same tactics. Yeah, you, you're right. But actually, I'll give you two examples. You know, I just see all of these are rooted in like the British policy. To give you an example, this British army was a very professional army. But, you know, because they had to recruit and also that's how they did. Now, if you look at in British army, what they made the rule was, if you claim yourself as a Sikh, right, you have to wear this five outward symbols. And actually, this five outward symbols, they also have a very uh, interesting history, but I will not go into it. That's a separate talk in itself. But they said, if you join, you know, you have to keep these five symbols because Sikhism at that time was about inward spirituality, like any like dharmic thing. There was also, we didn't know like, you know, now it's like this guru's birthday or that guru's birthday. It didn't matter whether he's born in March or April. Focus was on what their teachings were. So we didn't even know like, we didn't celebrate uh, Guru's birthdays. Anyways, they formalized, you know, they made the symbols, this British. And they said, to give you an example, uh, this guy whose name is, uh, I don't know, uh, Dylan, you know, like the senior people, they will all be checked from the British army compared to their rules. They said, if you join the army, and if you like, for example, trim your beard or use your symbols, we will kick you out of the army. They wanted to ensure this separateness. Like, you know, this is, you, how can you kick out a general? Like to train a professional soldier six years, it's, he's a very uh, pricely thing. The, but the British ensured this symbols or this focus on symbols that was actually done by the British. And to give you another thing, the first thing of women wearing a turban, right? They are not saying this doesn't exist. It comes in 1900 by some like radical loon called Teja Singh Basor. He said women should also wear like turban like men. And in his time, like to give you till 1915, Guru Gobind Singh Ji made an army called Khalsa. And his third wife, he said, she'll be the mother of the Khalsa and you give her. Her name in all historical literature is Sahib Devi. And even Basod, who is like, was the most radical and lunatic fringe, even in his thing, he writes Sahib Devi. But now after SGPC has come to power, if you Google today, they have changed her name to Sahib Kaur because again, they want to separate from the Sanatan field from Devi to Kaur. Now, if you look, you will only find Kaur, Kaur, Kaur. Only a person who is interested and, you know, looking at primary uh, uh, source material, he will know. So they are again creating divisions, not just outward symbols, changing the names and they're changing the complete history. And it's not just the British who've tried to use this divide and rule tactic. Obviously, even in a post-independent scenario, a lot of Sikh politicians have tried to take advantage of this, right? Right, right. The thing is, it's, again, I said, it is, it is perverse, but it is rational. So they basically, if you talk about from Bindran Manu to Akalis, these people have no intellectual faculties, right? So how come they do it? So they say, we are the protector. Your women are in danger. You know, like your uh, religion is in danger. You know, support us. So they basically go on spreading this fear of insecurity, which is complete lunacy. You know, to give you an example, Sikhs in UP are 0.3%. They are not in danger. They have never claimed in danger. They are doing much better than Sikhs in Punjab who are like, this farming is an unproductive activity. Sikhs in uh, UP, they have businesses, they have industries, like big industries. And Yogi, you know, what is 0.3% going to give him? You see how he reversed the Sikhs' faith. But where Sikhs are 60% of the population, their religion is always in danger. Because this is the Akali politics of, you know, encroaching and, you know, holding on to power. So you always see the religion is in danger. Religion is in danger. All the blasphemies ha happen there. Why don't they? If somebody has to do blasphemy, he should do it in UP, where they are 0.3%. Or yeah. he should do it in Himachal Pradesh, where there is like 95% uh, uh, Hindus. Hmm. Any logical person, if Hindus have to, or non-Sikhs have yeah. to do, why, why don't they do in uh, UP or Himachal? But yeah. it only happens. And again, you know, I would say if you read Kapoor's book, the, the same thing, you know, these people are just, it's, it's so uh, foolish, you know, because when I talk about Sikh history, you to 1980s, 1980s uh, and 2020, right? You pick a period, you tell me a slogan. And I will tell you, they did the exact same kind of politics and they were using the exact same slogans 40 years ago and 100 years ago. Hmm. 
you know it's the same like muslim league if you see what slogans they were using in 1920s they got pakistan and now there are like no sikhs they basically did a complete like genocide and you know like ethnic cleansing but you see islam is still in danger yeah it's it's so foolish you know they have not changed you i can say just go and read what muslim league was saying in 1920s and you see the exact same thing they are doing in 2020s because you know they are in a certain uh, head space and all they can do is this which is very dangerous for civilization it is and uh, especially with recent events like you know in the case when uh, there was a security breach with the uh, prime minister's uh, convoy uh, a lot of politics was played over that i mean you may have your own political inclinations and vested interests but at the end of the day we know indian history and how you know a couple of our prime ministers were lost due to that one due to the khalistani threat so in this case what you know what's your analysis of the entire episode uh, uh, when that happened to prime minister modi no it it is despicable and it is like playing with fire and you know it's not just this like punjab actually lost some of its like bravest sons like this so you know like the person who finished this militancy was beyond sing so he was blasted and he was blasted from inside again you know like uh, this uh, what do you say a police constable was in, involved and now bitta who fought most bravely so it was not just this you know they uh, you know they 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 killed like the chief minister and people don't understand like before he came uh, like beyond sing and he gave like kps gilder and they think you know oh they were like very like uh, heavy handed and they finished that's utter nonsense so the militancy to give you a thing ran for about a decade right and in that decade about 22000 people were killed right so in that two year period mm-hmm. just before uh, uh, bian singh and kps gill came 50% of the killings happened so on an average 500 people for a, i'm talking about a two year period every month on an average 500 people were being killed in punjab it was complete chaos and when they came actually the number of militants also died but they just showed okay there is a deterrent you know it's not free for all so this was you know the punjab was completely gone and these people saved them and you know like our chief minister bian singh was killed so it's actually very dangerous and you know like again you know they play with fire they don't understand and you know i'm i'm not you know i'm a sikh from delhi and my father was almost lynched so i understand this very well but you know there is on our uh, twitter channel also and i'll send you you can do it there is actually a very interesting thing when mrs gandhi was assassinated right and the uh, as, uh, killings of delhi uh, sikhs had not started in delhi hmm. there is a very important time snap a british television show they show like this khalistanis in uk they are shouting khun ka badla blood for blood and you know we chopped indira gandhi into pieces and you know like the children are like shouting slogans and they are distributing sweets and the white british journalist he says like what the hell are you doing you know you are you killed like a prime minister who was this so what if there is a reaction against the sikhs in india and he says i don't give a damn i told them before and people thought it was a joke and we will do it again and we don't care what happens to sikhs in india and you they at the same time show the hindus of uk they go to the temple and they are praying for peace so these people they play this politics and you know it's the same with all these people they are immune to the consequences of their actions so this poor people die and that's what they want they are living in canada or uk if like sikhs suffer mm. they their narrative that sikhs are you know persecuted or something that will ga- gather more strength so they are for strengthening their narrative not what happens to the ordinary sikhs mm. it's a very so there are in the insti- they are sorry their incentives are perverse but rational mm. i have a small follow up and uh, th- this is a two part a question one is that in layman's terms because a lot of people are taking note of what is happening and i i'm speaking about the millennials of course the seniors have uh, at least witnessed all of the violence uh, first hand or second hand have seen what has happened during the 80s but these days a lot of my own friends in canada and uk and america when they see a lot of these um, khalistani protest they're surprised as to why this is happening even today so could you explain how these organizations have sustained till now and to what end uh, are they even working and b when you look at the khalistani referendum that was carried out in the uk how serious is this because honestly um, 
I didn't know how to react when that entire episode happened, you know. So, Saran, you have to look like these people are really dumb and duffers, like. But that is there. This is not a question between intelligence, you know, where you debate. In a street fight between a lawyer and a thug, a thug wins, right? And ordinary people who have like sensible, who have productive lives, they don't have. They are not fanatics. So these people, they may be less in number. They may be very, very less in intelligence. on average but they i have they have fanatical committed commitment to their cause and they are down to using violence so that's why you know like when people look at their numbers they are very 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 dangerous people then second you know there is a 20 minute documentary that was made in i don't know 17 years ago or something or 14 years ago by this journalist called terry muleski is a very brave guy all canadian journalists have basically given up by harassment and something he made this documentary called sikh politics in canada hmm. i request your audience to please watch that document and you will understand what it happens so to to explain you in a gist so basically first they capture gurdwaras by violence right then what they do is you know like for example there is a bazaki which is a punjabi festival everybody comes they invite all sorts of politicians liberal conservative you know all you know come and you know they are white people they don't understand what is happening so they see hundreds and thousands of people and you know or tens of thousands of people and then they put posters of terrorists as well they don't know who these people are they don't know what is it. even punjabis don't know what happened in punjab in a uh, long way now assume there are 10 people they will all run for elections right now four of them would win the election when they win they get huge funds from the government line millions called multicultural fund to support all this diversity and all this stuff now they say see we got so many people for you give us the funds so these politicians it's not this money from their pocket or money that will go to their children it's government's money so they don't care they fund this khalistani gurdwaras yeah so they become you know they that's how they get the money so it's a very like a, a mafia kind of an operation mm-hmm. so they have the muscle power they have the money power they have the political power and that's how they are able to bully everyone that's why when i looked at uh, justin trudeau now he's become the chocolate boy for all the khalistani movements um, you know people were asking whether he genuinely understands what he's dealing with and he's still consciously associating with a lot of these extremists or he is completely clueless about what's happening and he just cares about his vote bank what do you think the possibilities are i don't think i think like for example again you know you're not stupid if you reach that level you know you you may lack in ethics but you have to need a street smart and cunning right to to reach that level so he of course he is playing with fire but again you know what happens with politicians is they work in their own self interest like anybody else so these people are very organized they can get you the money and you know stuff like that and second of course politicians work they have a very short term window right so they have to win the election they don't think what will happen 20 years hence and i give you an example what trudeau did for example in there is a great guy in vancouver area his name was braj dahan right and the he was basically nominated as a member of the liberal party to contest the election what trudeau did was he cut his ticket and gave the ticket to harjeet sajjan right. harjeet sajjan who became the defense minister and his father was a khalistani and he was such a popular khalistani that he even used to lose gurdwara elections so he his father could not even win gurdwara election and harji sajjan is such a despicable man so he was in the army and he did stolen valor which is the worst thing you can do you know you claim somebody else's achievement as your own so he is guilty of stolen valor so he made this khalistani harji sajjan as the nominee and at that time many sikhs of the liberal party they resigned they're like what are you doing we have made the party we believe in like canadian values we believe in you know freedom of speech we don't want these people khalistan is there an attack on our culture trudeau said no i'm going to give it there are people who are amradhari sikhs who you know who are baptized sikhs who are like orthodox sikhs you can say they resigned from the liberal party in protest but trudeau made sure that the ticket went to uh, uh, harjeet sajjan so how can you say he is oblivious he is going out of his way to ensure that but of course this is going to be very destructive for canada in future very interesting um what has the indian government and i don't mean the bjp in particular or the congress because we are talking about national security here because a lot of these protests and movements are funded from abroad and obviously there's there's a terror financing angle as well 
how much do we know in public knowledge as to what the indian government has done um, because of course we won't know about the covert operations uh, from from the has the magnitude uh, slowly decreased over the years what what would your analysis be no sir and like the thing is uh, so i don't know about the covert but i would say for example what is the overt right and in that sense i'm sure they went from a place of doing good but actually modi got uh, government policy against khalistanis has been disastrous like really disastrous so you first you have to understand that appeasement is always wrong and not just morally wrong it harms the community being appeased the most so for example congress used to appease the muslims right what that happens is it makes life very difficult for a person like arif mohammad khan because he is finding this lunatic fringe and the government is supporting this lunatic fringe muslim person raw border or something like that so how can individual fight so appeasement was wrong when congress was doing of the muslims and it is wrong when bjp is doing of khalistanis so it made life for people like me very difficult to give you an example what they did was in sikh gurdwara anybody was a sikh you know sardari could be sikh so they wanted you know this and they are doing this from 1920s who is a sikh so for political power to assert there they say anybody who says he is a sikh he is a sikh right even if you say you are a sikh yes we want more numbers so we can get extract more favors from the central government or british government at at that time right but when it comes to control of gurdwaras then they want to control their theocracy then they make this qualifications no 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 if you also say you are a hindu we are not going to tell you sikh if you also believe in veda we are not going to ask you sikh if you trim your beard whereas it's nothing to do with you're not a sikh so they make this thing for 10 years they wanted to debar sahizdari sikhs who were not like baptized uh, who didn't have like uh, like you know like free uh, beard and you know yeah. for 10 years they tried with manmohan singh government but he knew as a sikh that this is wrong he didn't do it modi government passed a uh, act of parliament that has basically disenfranchised all of us sikhs like me so imagine you know if you're running a hindu board and they say disenfranchise all the sharks because they are not true vaishnav and only vaishnav are hindu what kind of foolish thing they did this this is a disaster they basically removed they were 300 people in the blacklist so these people they have like killed innocents you know when they blasted this airplane in mid air more than 80 were children less than 12 years old i think about 200 did not receive a single body part and i'm talking to some of them these families are still grieving you remove these people from the blacklist what is the deterrent if the people would have apologized yes what we did was wrong we got you know we have we flew out in emotions and we abhor violence and we reject violence then it is fine but they blanketly removed blacklist of everyone no that is very very wrong so again i you know like i give you an example rajna singh said what happened in 1984 was a genocide you no know, genocide is a very charged word you know yes only sikhs died and no hindu died you should have used the word pogrom these khalistanis they used the statement of rajna singh so this nothing happened for 35 years once rajna singh said the statement they have passed resolutions in america uh, uh, provincial uh, uh, parliaments of uh, united states and canada that india did a genocide of sikhs and something like that and you know what is so fascinating it started with 3000 sikhs were killed this started in uh, 2015 coming to 2022 now this 3000 figure has jumped to 30000 sikh circuit <laughs> and this is passed in new jersey don't believe me go to the new jersey uh, parliament just a couple of months ago they have uh, passed this resolution that india did a ge- genocide and 30000 were killed so now they are changing the facts and history you know we suffered wow. from it we made peace with it you know we healed from it but they want to scratch and you know like just lie for no reason this is an eye opener even i didn't know a lot of these things um yeah in retrospect it actually harms the reforms that are coming in the way right because of excessive appeasement um let me redraw your attention to when we were talking about uh, sikhs having a vedic or a sanatani connection where did we lose that and how do we regain that is the biggest question right now no the thing is you know for example once once you start something you know and you develop an institution around it and you know institution develops its own bureaucracy and its own leaders it's very very hard to undo it so now for example sgpc sgpc stands for 
everything and you know what is so fascinating they just keep repeating you know it's it's so fascinating you know they keep saying we have sacrificed a loss for the nation and we have historic you know what is fa- fascinating if you go into the history of sgpc so they existed for a generation before india became independence so you read all their submissions to the british government they always say we have served the british crown very well wo kehte humne angrezon ke liye bahut qurbaniyan di hain so first they should decide they have sacrificed for the british or they have sacrificed for the sanatan right and then they what do you say in their thing they actually used to give uh, in writing to the british that they will not indulge in any political activity and actually you could not be a part of sgpc if you did anything against the british or spoke anything against the british or indulge in politics against the british so this was like a british institution and you know to give you a very small idea they say sgpc stand for shiromani gurdwara prabandhak committee no look at committee is it a braj word is it a hindi word committee is an english word yeah. it was created by the british you can say manch or you know samiti or something like that so the they have created it now they say gurdwara prabandham it was only for management of gurdwaras this is explicitly and repeatedly what they said to the british we have nothing to do with politics now they say we are sole representative of the sikhs and they again you know they are kind of a muslim person law board so there is a perverse institution and it has like hundreds and millions of you know in donation so that basically controls everything so when we are doing a social reform we are not doing social reform at the level of a society we are kind of like fighting a supra state which is the sgpc which is at the root of all perversion you know again you know this conversion is happening again they have made it such a talibani religion that you can't breathe you can't question or something like that. that's why there is such an exodus to christianity why are you believing blaming only the christians haryana and punjab are sister states they have the same socio economic pattern they are also like farming or something why is this mass conversion not happening in haryana why is it only happening in punjab and if you look at this haryana for example it started everything at a lower level than punjab punjab stole haryana's water that is a different thing but it got everything worse but look at haryana how it is progressing the crisis is so acute in punjab to give you another example when i grew up i am only 37 years old in my time in my youth punjab used to be the number one in sports right it was now haryana is getting 50% of the uh, international medal that india wins yeah. 50% and the second is not punjab second is far of manipur so the, you can't even compete in sports are the mothers of haryana giving more butter to their, to their children this sgpc has created such a spiritual crisis that we are feeling in everything from economics to you know spirituality to sports until that perverse institution is uprooted and challenged which is very hard because you know like we are fighting at our level and telling what is the history and what they have done you know how they have distorted our history and our gurus own words like and we are giving it with evidence but again you know the government in its all foolishness it's like it's somebody thinking if he uh, spend on the muslim person law board it will be a big benefit to the muslims it is completely wrong mm. so that's what that is what my i respect what modi ji is doing in terms of economics in last mile delivery in uh, rooting out corruption i respect him for that but on this he is completely wrong and he he has no appreciation of uh, the consequences of what what will be of this to what extent do you think um... conversions is a reality because i've 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 seen a lot of conversations around this and frankly uh, a few people do point out uh, those a few people actually say that this is perhaps an amplified issue and that it doesn't concern punjab as seriously as people put it out to be no sir and i will tell you a fact that you would probably not have heard elsewhere but the number of christian is and at least by a factor of 5 to 10 it's under reported and there is a good reason for it so when the and this is a college should listen who say like uh, uh, sikhs are like persecuted or got a bad deal she's got the best deal in india so you see for example when the constitution was created the muslims and the christians right they don't get quota benefits because they say you are not part of the hindu fold you you say you don't believe in caste system so you don't get the quota benefit because you make that assertion right but they get benefits of minority institution and educational institutions and blah 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 right so the hindus they can't have their religious institutions they can't have their own educational institutions right but i don't think quota benefit does we can talk about it, it actually does harm even the dalits right 
but they get the quota benefits now when the sikhs most people don't know the maximum number of uh, dalits and sts are actually in sikhs they are not in hindus they are not in buddhists so when this thing was thing the principle should have been the sikhs should not get quota benefits if they say they are not part of the hindu fold and they are a minority religion right or if they say they are part of the sanat they should not get this education now this this akalis at the time they understood if they do it all these dalits will go back to hinduism because at the ground level it, it there is no difference between hindu or a sikh but if you write on your paper you are a hindu you will get all the quota benefits so they said no we will create this huge and cry so sardar patel made a special exception and broke the principle and again so you see you know it never harms sikhs get both things they get minority institution as well as the quota thing and now these people who are converting to christianity on paper they don't convert on christianity because as soon as they file an affidavit that they are christian they will lose their all quota benefits yeah basically. so that is the reason so if you go anybody goes to punjab i know like you know punjabis you get on you sit in a taxi you go to school they start to, uh, proselytizing you meet a taxi driver he say you know he will wear a turban he will have a sikh name and then he say you know you should have faith in jesus or something like that <laughs> so it's it's very lent i'm 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 not living there but i know like somebody who goes to high school i know somebody who goes to one of the best universities in uh, this and they are saying this is happening all the time so it is under reported because you will lose the quota benefit so hmm. actually it's on a much larger scale people also very seldom talk about the hindus of punjab right there's not a lot of history that is openly known even for indians for that matter like our association and the imagination of a modern day punjab is that there are only punjabis who are sikhs and uh, frankly we are surprised uh, when somebody is a hindu from punjab the hindus of the punjab are like the biggest victims and you know nobody speaks about it you know because this punjabi spirit is also you know move on forget the past which has its good side and the bad side in a good side you know you always move on and you know we have had so many massacres that we can't count but the bad side is we repeat it so nobody studied the partition history that's what i've you know bringing in the beginning of the talk that's what i was bringing attention to and 80s was the same thing as 40s and we didn't study the 80s either and you know we this khalistanis are knocking at our door again so you know and even people who write you know for example you know like in hudson report or you know christian fair you know what they say is even kps gill what they show is for example i said 22000 people died and the way they put it is there were 60000 sikhs uh, uh sorry 60% sikhs and 40% hindus roughly right and 60% deaths were sikhs and 40% deaths were hindu that is one but the devil is in the detail if you look at it 40% of the people who were killed were militants right all the people who picked up the gun were the sikhs if you have to count the uh, casualties you count people in the civilians who didn't pick up the gun if you pick if you pick up then there that 8000 hindus died or what that actually means is a hindu civilians was four times as likely to be killed during the terrorism decade than a sikh that nobody i'm telling you i challenge you prove me wrong you will not read it anywhere now the second thing is you know we talk about exodus from kashmir and yes it happened I, and i don't know the figures i'm sorry i've not studied it carefully i could also be wrong but i've usually read figures when i simple search 1 lakh or 3 lakh you know there was a huge hindu exodus out of punjab so for example punjab population of the time was about 20 million if you read the census from 1981 to 1991 two and a half percent population of hindus fall down that means 5 lakhs hindus left and you know but i want to complete it i don't want to say it. if you read from 1981 to 1991 that 2 and a half percent actually came back as well so most of the hindus also came back because hindu sikhs had no problem hmm. but this akalis and terrorism had created such a situation now you know for example this tavleen singh i have a lot of respect for her because you know she was a sikh and she bravely covered and we keep posting on this you would not believe that they had basically what they said in ralif chalif gali in kashmir that either you convert or you know you leave or we will kill you i can show you tavleen singh reportage saying the exact same thing that hindus you leave otherwise we will not leave your women and children alive this is what they they are burning pregnant women alive this is india they they posted a poster like samaj sudhar in 1987 in that said anybody who goes to jagrata or goes to radha swami or you know does this 
we will burn them alive and this is not an empty boast they actually killed people like that whoever says jangan man will kill them alive you know they say if you uh, everybody has to wear a talibani uniform like a saffron turban and you know white shirt and black pants won't do it will burn actually there is a report by shekhar gupta reportage you read you know they are saying uh, that they went and you know the poor primary teacher said we have the children of laborers you know we don't have an extra uniform that you are saying you know you are on my bath you know like of course you can kill us please give us a few days these are children of laborers we don't have an extra they killed the primary teacher what was happening in punjab was such a uh, what do you say traumatic event that people don't want to remember but this just happened a generation ago you can't you imagine you know at, i will uh... yeah please follow this account sik seva that we put it we keep posting and it's all reportage you know what we do how for example khalistanis indulge in like mass rapes of women and that's how actually they lost so we put all this data here that nobody actually wants to see and it's not so what i am saying is or some khalistani kanad or something like that it's based on extensive reportage and this reportage was done by the same like new york times or la times as well but you know people have just forgotten what happened in the 1980s and when you look at what is happening uh, what happened rather with the entire farm laws protest uh, how do you see the progression in terms of how the khalistani movement has evolved no, these are all movement of the khalistani you basically you know these people are so stupid that they don't under, you know like for example some khalistani i was uh, watching and sitting in you know uk he was saying no farmer no food you 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 must have heard that slogan right that yeah. idiot should know for 150 years uk doesn't produce its food hmm. are they not eating it now they are sitting in for example you know us and they are saying no you know if you look at us us has the biggest arable land in the world right yeah. and you know it's it's a, you can grow anything and if you go to you see in 1800 so about 200 years ago 90% of people in america were involved in farming right after 100 years in 1900s 40% people were involved in farm another 100 years later which is around 2000 2% people were involved in farming so and you see how america has become such a rich country and this is not true for america i am saying for this is true for anywhere in the world yeah. is basically farming you know it's a labor intensive job so when you have people involved in a labor intensive job then you basically become poor and if you go back to like greek civilization that's why they were based on slavery slavery also comes from this farming because when you are farming you you are involved in labor intensive you will always be poor and a society becomes richer whenever it takes people out of farming and b- brings into industry so what they are doing they they are they are destroying it you know what this khalistanis they just hate india and sanatan so much that they will do anything to embarrass india and modi even if you know their whole commun- people are destroyed so that is you know they these people are acting out of i would say more malevolence than ignorance because they know what to support in uh, canada and they do just the opposite here so yeah. they these by repealing this farm laws you know, you know like this farm reforms which were like so pass breaking we may have taken punjab back a generation but what was supposed to be a political protest now let's g- give them the benefit of the doubt and say that uh, they have several disagreements with the farm uh, farm laws that were proposed why did it have to take a religious angle you know where did the entire khalistani element come into picture and who do you think are the real per- perpetrators here so sarath i will again you know so you know when i talk about history what is the purpose of history history is supposed to be the spectacles of a man so you learn from the past and that's why you have to study it very clinically and i just keep saying 90s 20 i give, now i give you an example what they were doing in 1980s so when they were out of power they wanted to embarrass the person in power and do a mass agitation and they use dharm yudh morcha you know religion and they like okay what are your thing what is an anpursab resolution nothing so from they had 45 points and you know it's it's like quackery you know you just laugh it's some, somebody was failed the fifth grade who has written this you know we are the greatest people we have made sacrifices and you know uh, i don't know like some kind of lunacy so they have 40 point points and they like okay make it they made it 15 points right and you know they were not no no ye roko bolo ko and what were the 15 points the first was uh, like uh, varanasi uh, uh, kurukshetra 
and i don't know mathra like they are religious city declare amritsar a religious city so madam gandhi said what is the problem in this we can do this she asked her bureaucrat they said madam something religious city doesn't exist and they blocked roads for it then they said you know there are so many trains in india why don't we have a train named after golden temple so madam gandhi said what is the problem in this okay we can do it we can so you know there was frontier mail from bombay to amritsar they said okay we will raid golden temple express or harmandir express but then they realized this train is most of the times late then they said people will abuse curse the train and when they curse the train they will curse our temple so they said no no if you don't want to do it's fine so you know it was just a comicry and you know again they say like you know now these farmers or so called farmers have died because you know in covid they were standing outside and they, now they are calling them shaheed martyrs now to give you an example verify it don't believe my word because some things are so outrageous in 1980s again in time of morcha 34 akalis were traveling in a bus this bus collided with a train now they said this 34 people are our martyrs no how are they are martyrs the government was not driving the bus the government was not driving the train the government did not push the bus on the train track it was their fault that they did it but again they said no 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 like again these people are farmers they said these are our shaheed and they made a gurdwara it is called gurdwara takkar sahib takkar means collision in punjabi or hindi so you just google gurdwara takkar sahib in taran taran they these people have been made martyrs so what this is what i'm seeing these people don't change because they are mentally bankrupt they are ethically bankrupt they are morally bankrupt they are spiritually bankrupt they keep repeating the same if you want i can give you another example from 1920s where they did the same thing is the same issue sacrilege religion in danger we are going to get our rights we are going to block the streets and come what way this is going you will have banned you know like this this is exactly what they do hmm. and people who die you know the inconvenient so many people and you like to give for example guru nanak says haq paraya nanka us war us gaye ki haq paraya matlab to take anybody's right for example haq haq paraya na us it is like a hindu eating a cow or a muslim eating a swine this is what it is you have people have destroyed people who were working there so first this protest started in amritsar then they said no 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 this is harming us you know we don't want our business to be let's destroy the industry outside delhi let's inconvenience this is what your religion has taught you this is what dharma has taught you it taught this is what guru nanak has these people are criminal elements and they need to be dealt like petty criminals interesting so what would you say is the solution going forward how can there be a connection or a rerouting with the sanatani identity for a lot of sikhs today you know i don't so you know when we talk about sanatani you know i, I, I made so you talk about a brahmic and sanatani mm-hmm. so what it is i think you know it's not just i think how we have to see is when you talk about sanatani is how much emphasis you lay on speaking the truth that is the thing right so the truth has to come how much space do you have for self criticism if you have this thing then you are sanatani no if you look at for example in the christian religion now they have reformed what you are seeing in the conversion of missionaries is you are seeing the worst aspect of it but where i am living and i live for a long time in europe as well they speak much more truth than us you can completely criticize the church and the clergy and then so it's completely open to crit- i see them as sanatani now whereas if you look at the sikh panth which started as a part of it there is no space for uh, what do you say criticism they comp- they lie all the time they have become mulayat they are abrahamic so i check people not by their names or what by their outward symbols but by their uh, conduct or outward symbols so mm-hmm. this is what you have to do the government should stop we are fighting a fight on ethicals and you know this is uh, this youtube and something like this this is like the printing press so the revolution in christian world also came through the when the printing press came up and you know then you can free from the uh, clutch of the church people can read the bible in their own language and understand this is what we are trying to do we are bring out the real history what happened and we are fighting the sgpc so what we are doing we are doing the work of martin luther finding the catholic church but the government is strengthening the catholic church which is the sgpc if they stop then there is a future the, otherwise they have walked on the path of taliban so maybe there is a way for renaissance we are certainly hoping for and this is what is dharma you know you act out as it will be even if it seems unlikely yeah. so we are doing it that's it you're doing an amazing job thank you for all the seva that you're doing it's incredible 
and uh, this is the first time that I've explored the Khalistani history through the lens of uh, Sanatana Dharma. So thank you so much. It was an eye-opening talk with you. And I'm pretty sure our audience will get really educated and um, they'll find it very interesting as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Puneetji. Thank you, sir. Jema Bharti. And I would just say, you know, so I'm just the face because it's pretty dangerous. I like coordinate a team. It's called Sikh Seva. So if you follow us, you know, we have people who are really committed and maybe in future they will also come out with their own identities and face because it's, I can do this in New York for several reasons, you know, like I have, it's relatively safe. I also don't work for anybody that they can fire me from the job, but it's almost impossible if you could say these things that I'm saying, if you lived in Canada or in India, right? So we hope more people come out and, you know, uh, do it. So uh, please support our team Six Seva. That's all I have to say. Jai Ma Bharti. We will, we will tag you in all of our platforms so that, you know, more and more people can know. And uh, thank you so much. Please continue to do the seva that you're doing. And I hope you inspire a lot more people like, um, like you've inspired me at this moment. Thank you so much. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.